Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video this morning. I trust and hope that you guys are doing really amazing, and we're going to be taking a look at Hurricane Lee as well as Tropical Storm Margo, and we also want to talk about what is going on across the Caribbean and surrounding areas. And before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so, and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. And so first things first, we're taking a look at what is going on across the Caribbean and surrounding areas. And here we can see that across parts of the Northern Caribbean, there is a bit of activity, maybe some passing showers, nothing too crazy. And then up into parts of the Bahamas, there's that area of lots of showers and thunderstorms due to the trough in the region. And then as we head uh, further down here, we can see that over in Central America, we've also got some activity there. But uh, things get drier as we head down to the ABC islands also for trinidad tobago barbados and the windward islands and even further down into the Guyanas. and even as we look at the rainfall map here coming from the euro model we can see that things get a bit more colorful for parts of central america and colombia and venezuela but for the aforementioned areas the windward islands trinidad tobago barbados also for the ABC Islands and down in parts of the Guyanas. Most of the Guyanas, much rainfall activity is not anticipated. But across uh, other spots in the Caribbean, not everywhere, there could be some showers and thunderstorms popping up this afternoon or maybe just some passing showers uh, at the most. But nothing too crazy is anticipated at this point in time. And all of that rainfall in association with Lee, the worst of it, will be remaining offshore. So as it is close enough in proximity, it might induce some showers here and there across sections of the Leeward Islands, but major impacts are not anticipated in terms of that rainfall activity or even those strong winds. So that is not really anticipated at this point in time. So here we are taking a look at the satellite imagery of the storm here and we can see that it is yet to pop back out an eye. So it is actually being beaten right now by some wind shear. So the shear is not very conducive. Those upper level winds are quite strong and that is why Lee is struggling out there and it should remain in such conditions for a while, maybe through the rest of today. But then as we head into tomorrow, going to Monday, it might be in a more conducive environment and regain its strength. So it is expected to re-strengthen even though it has weakened significantly since becoming a Cat 5 hurricane. And so here we have it. So maximum sustained winds are 115 miles per hour and it is moving to the west northwest at 12 miles per hour. So now we see that H in the cone of uncertainty here. That H simply stands for hurricane but not a major hurricane. So that H stands for either cat 1 or cat 2 hurricane but cat 3 to 5 that is a major hurricane status there. So we see that some further weakening is anticipated as Lee battles the share, but again, it should be in a more conducive environment as we head into tomorrow, go into Monday, and thus should be re-strengthening. And as of right now, we can see that it is uh, it is well offshore, and it is going to be kicking up that dangerous surface I've been talking about in previous updates. If you're going to be partaking in any marine activities, if you're in parts of the northeastern Caribbean, off the Bahamas, there's some Caicos Islands, Bermuda. Uh, the east coast you want to exercise caution so it could re-strengthen back up to a cat 4 hurricane with peak winds up to around 140 miles per hour that's what the national hurricane center is expecting as of right now and uh, those sea surface temperatures will be conducive to allow for that to happen for some time because look at this closer to bermuda there you can see those cooler waters and that uh, that's because of previous cyclones such as franklin once Franklin was sitting around there it's just taking up all that heat content all that moisture and heat and uh, cooler waters from further beneath the surface had uh, made its way up to replace that taken warm water so that phenomenon is known as upwelling and that is why we see those cooler temperatures within that area there so that's not going to be supportive of much intensification of Lee so let's see what it's going to be doing over the next couple of days and so guys as it relates to possible impacts, the system is expected to remain offshore, but it could be close enough in proximity to Bermuda to result in some uh, impacts there. That is still unknown at this point in time because
because we're talking about several days well into the future. And this isn't a quick moving cyclone anyway. That is where it's expected to be near the end of the coming week. So it's not going to be moving around a whole lot. But if you're in Bermuda, it is important that you keep watch. And also for parts of the northeastern U.S., potentially for Atlantic Canada as well for the long term. But uh, in terms of any impacts to Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, that is not likely. That is not expected right now. So Lee is going to be remaining well offshore for you guys. And now we're going to be talking about uh, Margo. So we've got Margo out there and it has finally begun strengthening. So Margo currently has maximum sustained winds of 45 miles per hour and she is moving to the west northwest at 13 miles per hour. So she's a fish storm out there, not a problem for anyone and could potentially become a hurricane as we head into the early part of next week. And so guys, even though we've got these active cyclones, the season as we know it is not over yet because there's a pretty decent chance that we're going to be seeing a lot more uh, of these tropical waves. Maybe not a lot more, but more of these tropical waves coming off of Africa and developing. But as it relates to where it goes, uh, that is uncertain at this point in time. But we've got a lot of model runs expecting that, hey, we could see something remaining out to sea, not being a bother for anyone. And then other models such as Canadian and GFS have showed that, hey, we could have something in the Caribbean uh, and not just something minimal. Canadian was showing a hurricane and GFS was showing a crazy system that eventually would make its way up to Florida. But I would say a pretty low chance of that happening at this point in time because we're heading far out into the future with this. But uh, what we see to kind of confirm the fact that we will have some activity out there, some additional activity, is the latest update from the Climate Prediction Center. So I've actually covered this in one of my previous updates, but we're going back to this map here. So this is a global tropics hazards outlook map and it is from the Climate Prediction Center. So we're focusing on the Atlantic and there we have week two and week three. So for week two, we see that highlighted green area across the Atlantic indicating the probability of above average rainfall and that red and white striped area indicating the probability of tropical cyclone formation. And then as we head to week three, we see the same thing here and that other area Area, that shaded red area uh, that is indicating a much higher chance of seeing something out there. So we've got the Climate Prediction Center expecting that, hey, things will be getting active as we head to the mid and latter part of September, which isn't something surprising considering that this is the peak month where we tend to see a lot of activity take place. So of course, I'll be keeping you guys posted on all that is happening and all that is expected out there. And of the next name to be used for this hurricane season is Nigel. So so let's see if we'll have Nigel by the latter part of next week. What models have been showing that happening. And so I hope you found this video to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you once I get the chance to do so. And as always, remember to be weatherwise.